Hallo Nico. Hallo Eileen, hoe gaan het met jou? Goed met jou. Lekker man, ik lacht dus niet. Ik zie een die is op. Hallo die. Hi Nico, hoe gaat het? Goed en jij? Kan ik klaar nee. Lekker man. Lekker. En ik zie, ik zie Anthony Charles is hier. En yeah. from, from Ethiopië. You are also here, my girl. Good to see you. Ah, oh, Anthony, now we can see each other. It's good. Yes, yes, I just switched on the video. Okay, no problem. Just want to wait a, a minute or so. We are starting at one o'clock. So. Inko, how are you doing? Sorry. No, no. I'm speaking to Inku actually. Hi, Michelle. Hello, Inku. How are you doing? Hi. Are you good? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. How are oh, you doing? Fantastic. How's everybody doing there? Fantastic. Good. I will. I will start with the um, the webinar now. Okay. I want to thank. Everybody, I just want to see that it is recorded, yes. I want to thank everybody for attending. Um, I see John Patrick has, has just um, come on board as well. And I'm going to, to start with why we are we're actually here. So if we are looking at, at isolytics, I just want to, uh, to welcome everyone, firstly. Se secondly, the, the guidelines is please mute your microphone. Um, I can do it, but uh, I, it is much much easier if you are doing it. Um, keep your, your video on if you want to. Uh, it is actually better to have it off um, that we can, can have a better video stream for all the attendees. Um, hopefully the, this presentation will, about, will take about 15 minutes. So we are planning to be finished within 50, 15 minutes questions. Please, um, we have got at the bottom of Zoom, there is a chat area. Please lock your questions there. Eliane will be monitoring that. And then in the last 10 minutes of the hour, we will, we will start um, to answer all the questions. So please keep your questions till we are finished and, and then we can address it. The webinar um, shall be recorded and it will be available in video and podcast and shall be made available after this webinar. Um, just want to give you quickly the table of contents. You can see there's a big table of contents, but we are we are actually only addressing um, the ones that is that, that is in bold. So it is we scratch the Vase Africa. What is isolytics and uh, the isolytics VAR, are uh, the revenue streams, the system structure, and the benefits. And then we will go over to the questions. All the others. Okay, sorry, sorry to bother. Would you just mind sharing your screen, please? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you, Carleen. Hi. Um, okay. So um, <clears throat> this is what, what we are, are going to be addressing. And you will see that the, the, uh, the isolytic system has been developed for actually a GRC system, uh, a GRC and A system. The A stands for um, sorry, GRC stands for governance, risk, compliance, and assurance. So we are actually building, we have actually built the system for an assurance system. And then we are speaking about the bow tie. Bow tie is a fantastic um, risk analysis system. Checklist um, is also part of the risk methodology. The mobile system, I'm not going to go into, into this in detail, but, but we have got a mobile system that is actually um, implemented at the moment between Dar es Salaam and, and certain, certain um, delivery, delivery areas um, in Tanzania. Um, yes, in Tanzania. And then we've got the I-square mass. I-square mass is actually an, an abbreviation for um, in incident and investigation management administration system. So this is where you're logging your incidents, do your investigations, whether it is a discipline investigation, whether it is a criminal investigation, or whether it is um, a root cause analysis investigation that you are doing. Surveys, um, this is also 
available and if you if you if you understand the iso structures um, and feedback from a client or actually the, the total quality management systems, the TQM management systems, then you know that that surveys and feedback regarding your product and, and your services is extremely important. And then we, we've got um, Isletics compliance that is actually working with legal, legal compliance. It's also working with, um, we can populate every um, service level agreement and all the, the, the deliverables that you've got there, that you can actually manage and monitor um, the service level agreement and also determine what is the maturity of, of um, the system itself. Who is Crest Advisory Africa? Crest Advisory Africa has been established in June of 2014 and we specialize in corporate governance and this range from enterprise risk management, business continuity, compliance, health and safety, quality management, and we are certified through the the Professional Evaluation Certification Board in 17 international standards. So we can, we can do a, a lot um, of training, um, certification, and audits um, in, in the ISO space. We are also a Platinum member of the PCB. This means that um, the Platinum member on the PCBs, the, the Professional Evaluation Certification Board's system, um, they've got six levels there. And uh, we are starting with the, the, the initial accredited partner, um, the platinum partner. There are only 29 um, platinum partners internationally at the moment um, out of 1,800 accredited resellers. And we were number 23. So um, I'm just going to touch quickly on the, the Crest offerings. We are doing training in ISO, other um, disciplines as well. Um, Advisory services, we, we are working, as I said, in the corporate governance space. So from enterprise risk to um, vol voluntary principles or human rights audits, we are doing that. Audits, um, we can do first level audits, second level audits, third level audits, and independent audits, and even certify management systems as well. Products, we've got products that is actually implementing, assisting with our ISO implementation. Um, that is our toolkits. We've got safety products that we are pushing out, out there as well. Technology, this is what we are speaking about. Um, the isolytic system that is actually talking about the GRC environment. We are also working with um, incubation, ex executive and business incubation, where we are through the systems and through all the management processes, we are actually building a systems. Um, uh, the return on investment for in a company as well as for executives and C-suite um, employees. We are doing conferences, breakfast sessions, and, um, and product launches, et cetera. And we are also hosting forums, whether on LinkedIn or um, in real life, face-to-face. -face. And our flagship is the international certification that we can do for persons, for products, for um, management systems, training organizations, trainers, and auditors. Just want to give you a bit of a, a snapshot. This is, this is um, the fact that, that I, can, I can certify those standards uh, within the, B, the PCB range. So I'm an international certified management system auditor and I'm using uh, the isolatic system for my audits to make it for me much easier and to make sure that, that isolatics is, that actually we are conducting a continuous audit within our environment uh, that we are working. What is Isolytics? Isolytics is a system that has, been, uh, that has been built to drive performance, and you can see that in the branding itself there as well. It drives performance and certainty. We are specifically looking at a return on investment here, but we are looking at assurance. Assurance is actually our biggest um, over, overall objective um, that we've got. So, you will see that the components of um, the various systems within Isolytics is that, that we are working with a GRC component, the, the governance risk and compliance component. So whether it is, it is ethics, whether it is compliance itself, whether it is service level agreements, we can, we're working with that. Combined assurance, um, the output of all of these is actually combined assurance because every service, sorry, every assurance provider or every 
vertical that you've got in your company needs to provide assurance to the, the executives as well as um, to the board to ensure that, that everybody is actually on the same page and that everybody are measured in the same way. The I square mass, I have, I have spoken about that. We have also got the bow tie um, XP methodology. That is a great methodology to do um, risk assessments. Uh, we, we, are, we have built our, our environment uh, specifically on enterprise risk ma management. Um, and then the ISO is actually our backbone. ISO management systems are actually a structured management system that you can actually determine where, what, what you are doing, how you are doing that, as well as that you've got a, a specific measurable, a shell is a requirement that you need to comply with. The mobile system, I've spoken about that, that is working from our cell phones and with a, with a system as our, our, our backbone checklist um, is a fantastic um, risk management tool. Compliance, we are, we are doing surveys and then the, I want to say the flagship of Isolytics is actually the artificial intelligence that we have built in behind um, this, the, um, the components now itself. And um, this can also be taken further to work with big data and, and distill that into, into smaller components that you can actually measure a specific deliverable, a specific product line, a specific um, process, et cetera. And that is part and parcel also of machine learning. Machine learning is actually um, uh, an outcome of artificial intelligence and the more data one is getting, um, like in banks and in governance structures, the cleverer the machine can be calibrated to make sure that your results um, are more valid and that you can actually present it to the board. So what is Isolytics? Isolytics has been established, um, we've been working, sorry, Quest Advisor Africa is um, the owner of um, Isolytics, but we, we are in partnership with one of the universities in South Africa that is assisting us with the building uh, and the configuration of the management system. And this system measures the health and, and maturity of any management system or any framework that you are working with. So it is not only that it is management systems that is ISO based, it can also be um, um, SOX or so, so Bain Oxley, or it can be um, the IPPF, anything that you have got as a framework um, or as a service level agreement, we can test the health and the maturity of that. And um, this is the first and only system globally that can do this. And it provides a, um, a, combined, a combined assurance on, a various, on various levels of the organization serves as a repository for evidence, measures the level of risk. Now, this is a term that, that people are not actually using and measures the level of assurance. And this is a term that people are really not actually using. So we are the front runners in, in the market here and enables continuous auditing of risks across various management systems. Now, the key characteristics of um, Isolytics is firstly, that um, it has got the ability with a single sign on for users to actually interact with, with all the modules of the software. Uh, the ability to, to grant role based permissions for escalations and notifications, whether it is, it is normal notifications or um, push notifications. Security and segregation of information for different users, giving input and information, the ability to store sensitive data in country. Very important because we are, we are working within uh, the guidelines of the GDPR, also ISO 27701, that we um, are one of the leading parties in, in that environment. The ability for reporting and extracting of information uh, manually in either PDF, Excel, um, or Word, um, and you can use that in your reports. API capability, very important one, to feed other systems as well as to obtain information from other systems. Then the ability to pull in and transform data from other systems, visualization through dynamic dashboarding that, that I will show you, 
And this can be designed in terms of, of your client's requirements. And then we've got a, modu a modular approach to ensure interconnectivity between all the modules and you build your own interconnectivity um, dynamic system and software approach. If we are looking at, at the methodology that we are using, it is actually the PDCA. The PDCA methodology um, is, is a very important methodology because it is actually giving you the integrated management system that all the, the management systems globally are actually working, working with since about um, 2009, 2010, and every ISO is designed in, in, the, same, in the same manner. I am, not, I am going to, to demonstrate for you isolatic system. So the, the, the system itself um, is giving you a, a huge advantage because it is a pre-populated system. It is pre-populated in these already. From ISO 18708, 2301, 31000, 13485, that is medical devices, um, 14001, that's, that's um, environment management system, uh, compliance management system, 19600, food management, up till um, ISO 9001. And we are busy loading, I think, five or six um, more standards, as well as three or four more frameworks. So if you look at, look at this, you have got we have chosen here four um, standards that you can see that, that, that there is a combined approach in actually looking at every discipline that you are working with, whether it is um, 18788 that is specifically working with the security environment, whether it is ISO 31000 that is working with enterprise risk, whether it is occupation health and safety, um, or whether it is business continuity, and you can go on and you can you can have six to six to nine systems that you are actually working here, here with. We have seen that companies are, are working in the range of um, around three or four um, standards maximum. So um, it is usually ISO 9001, 14,000, 45,000, business continuity, um, uh, 2301, and possibly 27,001. So, um, so, so this is your, your integrated um, dashboard. We've got all four standards. This can be in, incorporated into, into a higher level dashboard as well, that you can see how is, how, how is every um, standard incorporated with, with each of the others. And so if you are looking at, at the system itself, it has been developed, firstly, to be aligned with a management standard or a management system. Now, um, this is, we, we are looking at 18788. 18788, um, the context, leadership, planning, support, all of those are actually fairly the same in all the standards. So if you're looking at, at, um, at the context, context is actually clause four within ISO, uh, within any ISO. Leadership is clause five, planning is clause six, support is clause seven, operations, this is where the differences is coming in per discipline or management system, that is clause eight. Nine is performance that has to do with um, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation, uh, internal audit and management review, and then um, improvement. We are speaking about improvement here that, that has to do with your corrective actions that has been identified through any of the processes. And then our last integrated um, system um, icon there is actually where we've got um, the I square mass in it where we've got our checklist, we've got the surveys, the bow tie, and the mobile system is also part of, part of this. Just want to give you a, a quick um, overview. If you're looking at, if you're looking at, at any of, of these, these, these systems, you, you will see that, that the, the internal context, internal context is actually describing your company's objectives, your company's strategy business mission, value, ethos, um, culture, your business unit strategy, et cetera. And that can be found within the standard, but if it's a risk-based thinking um, myth methodology, you have to look at ISO 73 um, of, of 2009, because that gives you a whole spectrum of, um, of 
deliverables that you need to actually look for in your company firstly, but secondly, that you need to, um, to measure. Now, if you look at, at, at all of these on the left hand side with your description, you can change it at any, any time with this pencil on the right hand side. If I go to compliance, so we've got different measurables. I just want to explain to you quickly what this is. Compliance, firstly, we can toggle this or decide, are we, do we have objectives or not? That, that within um, this space, the graph space, that you will see that it is changing immediately. Um, I just want to, to take it back there. Then if you're looking at ice and dam, ice and dam has to do with um, the ice is the internal control effectiveness. This is how strong is your control that you've got. As well as dam is your document um, assurance matrix. Do you have a document that you can actually determine? Do you have objectives or not? And can you prove it? Because it is all to do with evidence-based um, um, processes. Without evidence, you, you, you are not scoring any, anything there. Your level of assurance, level of assurance is actually a combination of these two of your ice and your dam. And this is, this is configured at the back of the, at the back end of the system with our artificial intelligence. And that also gives you the balance of the level of risk. And then it is um, documented in, in, a, um, in a risk matrix. That is a very mature risk matrix. And then we are actually bringing in as well the non-conformances that a system is actually, that is actually based on this, this certification system um, that we are working with. And out of this, we can, we, um, we, we have got a score there or, or a weight there that we are um, providing as well. And then your CAM is your combined assurance um, model that is, that is identifying who is your assurance providers and on which level are they. You can see there, there's a one, a five, a six, a three, and a four. I will go into detail. And this is also weighted. And then you've got the evidence that, that you can up, upload in this blue um, circle. You've got your evidence storage in your square, and you've got, you've got action steps that you can project management, what needs to be done on your objectives. So if I go through, just want to, to, for you to actually look at your level of assurance. Now, the level of assurance at the moment with 4040, as well as with a, with a minus 25 and a plus 25 there, it, those two are, are actually canceling it out. So you, you're getting here a 38% um, of level of assurance. Now, if you, if you are changing that and you say that it's 80%, you will see that, that the, the level of assurance is changing now as well to 56 and your level of risk is changing um, to 44. On your document assurance matrix, you will now, now that it is 80%, you should definitely have a document. Let's, let's go now, if you look at, at this process here, this is actually described in eyes, uh, um, in the standards in, in clause 7.5.3 that you are looking at specifically um, that there's a document that it has been approved on, on the 100%. It is on the documentary system and all relevant people have immediate access to it where they are working and everyone, everyone has been trained um, in this and there is evidence in this regard. Now, if you look at this and you are working it backwards to that it is not relevant, uh, not applicable or no document in existence, et cetera, then let's choose 60% and you will see that the level of assurance is changing now to 66 and the level of risk to 34. Now, this is where enterprise risk management is coming in, where you are actually having all these deliverables or descriptions that is actually in the standard that is now plotted on an enterprise risk management matrix. Now, we are working with, um, with the first requirement. It is now rated as an eight there, and you can go to eight and you will see that, that there's a one and a three that you are, um, that, that, is, that is in within that block. So all of those that is in red um, from um, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 need to be addressed to make sure that they are actually going into the green um, or as close to the green. So if you're looking at, at that, the, the further influence, now, now this, is, this, this is very simple because you need to have evidence that you have got objectives and out of your objectives, 
you can actually drive your company's um, strategy and what needs to be in there. But the moment that you are starting with non-conformances, and I just want to open here, this is the, the non-conformance matrix that is actually prescribed by, by um, ISO. So you can also de define this as major findings or major non-conformances. So major non-conformance is described as a total failure of the system. A total failure of the system. Now, total failure of the system cannot go without a repercussion. So this is why we have weighted it a minus 50 because it is directly impacting on your level of assurance. Your minor non-conformance is um, a non-conformance that judgment and experience indicate is not likely to result in a failure of the system, but can reduce the ability to ensure control processes, products, and services. And we have uh, weighted that at minus 25, because this is actually things that you need to do to close it out. There is work that, that must be done. And it is also having a financial impact and a time impact um, on your business. Then if we are looking further um, at observations, observations is a, is a proactive process um, that you are actually preventing a non-conformance, a minor non-conformance, and this is why we have weighted it a, a plus 10 opportunity for improvement, a plus 20, and then not, not applicable or out of scope, that is a zero and, and acceptable. So because we, we have got an 80 and a 60 there, I want to, I want to go and make it a minor non-conformance, that is minus 25. And if we go over to the combined assurance matrix, you will see there that we've got six levels of combined assurance. Firstly, it is the line function. Secondly, it is the specialist function. Thirdly, it is your internal, your appointed internal auditors within your company. And then we've got external auditors, external fraud examiners, and then a regulatory inspection. Now, if you're looking at the, the one, two, three, it is, it is giving you positive points. If you're looking at four, five, and six, it is giving you negative points, minus 15, minus 25, and minus 50. Because if a regulator is coming to your, um, to your environment and a regulator is giving you a minor non-conformance, I can guarantee you that your level of assurance in that space are definitely being affected and that the board and everybody that is involved in that, in that space are going to be making some noise about why did it happen firstly, but secondly, when do you close it out? So that minus 50 has, has got now a big impact now on your level of assurance because now your level of assurance are actually being driven by, by compliance as well, but sorry, by assurance firstly, secondly, by non-conformances, and thirdly, by who has um, conducted um, the inspection day or the audit day. Then you can upload in your, in your audit evidence, um, whether it is observation, verbal, documentary, technical, analytical, confirmative, or physical and, and mathematical, you can upload any documentation there. And with observation, you have to go and, and write what did you observe. So here is our um, the depository that you can see all the evidence that was uploaded in terms of objectives. And, and you can have an analysis on, on this. What is, um, where are you lacking? Uh, and on which level are you lacking? But this has got a date and time stamp and it is uploaded by a specific person. So you have got a full audit trail of everything that you need to do, as well as with your actions, you've got a project management process here that you can give a task, you, can, you have the issuer, when is, it, is the due date, uh, by whom must be done, it must be completed um, by so-and-so, and this is your project management, as well as if you want to change your uh, um, uh, the description here, you can have the objectives of company A, B, and C. And when we um, are coming back, we will see that um, it just take a, a bit of time just to, to upload there, and you can define that yourself. Now, out of, out of this, all of this, in every management system, you are always asking, what is the gap? Where do I need to work? 
what do I need to do that you don't spend energy unnecessarily on things that is that is perfectly right. So in this in this um, table, it gives you the gap analysis on each and every level um, of whether it is compliance, internal control effectiveness, document assessment matrix. So here you already have combined assurance in in this in this space. And out of this, you can also see in your on your graphs what is your your compliance profile, what is your internal uh, control effectiveness profile, and you can we can we can also bring in here your risk appetite and your risk tolerance um, that we can work with that, um, as well as your document assessment matrix, your level of assurance and your level of risk. Level of assurance is actually that you are giving a guarantee to um, to your employer, to the board, to the exco, to say that this is how good we are actually, and or this is how good our controls are. The level of risk is the opposite of that. In your risk profile, your non-conformance um, profile as well, below the line is external and above the line is internal um, audits or, or findings. And then your, your, uh, your combined assurance modeling that is giving you below the line what is actually um, conducted with assurance providers from outside the company and what is your assurance providers in the company. And you can download these, these things into PDF um, and we can have a full um, um, downloaded um, actual measurement that you can use in your reports. And all of these, whether it's internal, external, legal, subcontractor, human rights, um, stakeholder, regulatory permit or license, all of this are actually then summarized in, into one, um, one summary context slide that you, can, that you can visibly see what is happening in every environment and where do you need to have your work to be done, as well as that gives you also the risk profile um, in this specific context. Very important because this is, this is driving maturity and the health of your management system. And if you are letting the ball fall within your subcontractors, that is possibly making out a huge um, uh, component or structure of your budget firstly, but secondly also um, of, of your dependencies and interdependencies within risk management, then you need to revise your subcontractor environment. Now, all of these are actually then um, so leadership is working exactly the same, planning is working exactly the same, support the same, operations um, also the same, performance. What we have done here with performance is we have actually allocated um, specific sections to monitoring. Monitoring is a, is a specific task that you need to have in a management system because you need to monitor whether your lights are on. Somebody needs to go and check it. Then you have to go and measure. The measurement of the lights is actually lux. So how strong is the light? Is the lux in that, in, in that space correct for that space? Or do you just have a light um, that is not, not actually serving any, any kind of purpose? Then the analysis is if you have to have a light with a 10 lux or 100 lux, and you've got a light that, is, that, is, that has got five lux, your analysis shows you where's your gap in it and then evaluation is that um, does that light serve a purpose? Is it driving an objective? And how do you actually incorporate the monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation um, into the whole performance management process? And then you can also conduct exercising and testing. Exercising and testing is very dominant um, in ISO 9001, in ISO 13485, in ISO 22301, in 27,001 and the whole family of 27 that is actually working with information management systems. Um, so testing and exercising as well as health and safety, because this is where you are doing evacuation exercises to see do people conform firstly, do they adhere to the process and how quickly can, can, you, can you evacuate uh, within um, if there's a fire in the building. And what we have further done here is that we have, built in for enterprise risk management, a specific environment where you are looking at your strategic objectives in a strategic risk register. 
Now this can be populated uh, by yourself. So, so we, can, we can have the, a key risk indicator or another key risk indicator um, to say that um, KRI number two is financial um, well-being or, or something. It, it depends and it is also doing spell checking for you as well. That's nice of the system. So it is changed there. And when we, when, when we get back, it will also be changed there. So in the, same, in the same way that you are doing everything else, this is actually um, uh, also uh, being, being measured in the same way. And you can measure it on every level of your organization, whether it is on a, in a strategic environment, whether it is with a board and the executives, whether it is at a departmental risk register or objectives, whether it is operational risk registers and objectives, and we can include here um, uh, quality. We can include here also um, compliance. Um, so anything that you that you need to need to have there, as well as uh, in your operations, we can do the same thing with your service level agreements to make sure that operations are actually actually executed within the ambit of the service level agreement firstly, but secondly, that you have got um, the performance that you are driving and that you are recording those performances through your monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation process. Um, improvement, the same, and then our integrated management systems. What we are doing here is, is that um, if you're looking at the I square mass, we have built the I square mass um, in, um, to do with incidents and investigation management systems um, or incidents specifically with the purpose to actually draw reports, draw management reports, because you want to know what is the day of the week that incidents are happening. Um, this is maybe on Sundays. What is the date in the month that you've got the most incident or the least? What is the, the time of the day? And, and we've got, I want to say fancy things here that, that you don't have to go and type in there. Um, you, you've got the street address, a suburb, a suburb analysis, a provincial analysis, a zip code analysis, and if you if you if you, if you want to to drill in granularly, you can either go and search or you or you can can go and just plot it there and say, but ah, actually, it is not there; it should be there. And you've got a nineteen level um, uh, lats and longs that gives you precise precise plotting. Um, if you if you are drawing a report, the description is is usually simple. What what we have done here uh, with a type of incident, we have actually taken the management systems, whether it is security, occupational health and safety, risk information management, that the incident is actually allocated to the specific management system, and that you are not sitting with a whole bunch of these um, incidents, and you and you need to actually go and sift it um, at the end of the month. So. Let's go for risk management. So risk management, uh, the categories, we can change at any time according to your own environment. So what we've got here is strategic risk, operational risk, marketing and sales risk, information, etc. So if you're looking at, let's, let's go for operational risk. Then you will see that, uh, that a third level down, you've got product liability, you've got product failure. This is risk quality management. Um, et cetera, maintenance, et cetera. So everything that you need to have there and then your description is in free text. Um, and then what is usually not in other systems is um, your, your mitigation processes. What is your, your immediate corrections? So if the light is off, what do you do? If it needs to be on, you switch it on. That is your immediate correction there. The impact of this is then actually measured on five levels. Now we've got a formula that is that is working um, that we are working with um, in Crest Advisor Africa um, that we are calling the P square S T square modeling for control management. So P square is people and processes, S is your system controls, and then T square are your tools and your technology controls. Now with a company, we can um, we can either have a drop down list that we can we can choose or select. Or we can, we can say uh, that we've got a secretary, secretary there, and the effectiveness of the secretary 
um, was 40% because the incident happened in the CEO's office, or you can, you can make that a PA, and that PA is costing the company 30,000 Rand. And now every, everything of these are actually going into what is the loss category? Is it a financial loss? Is the people, and this is aligned specifically with your consequence matrix, that we can actually cost that. And so you can, you can do the same with each and every one of these um, controls, and you can list two, three, four, it doesn't matter. Um, this is aligned with your internal control effectiveness and your costing then as well. And then it gives you an internal control effectiveness rating of an eight, your level of risk is a 92, and your, um, your residual risk rating that you're going to plot on your, your risk matrix is going to be a 24. And then you've got a cost of controls versus the value of the risk. And let's say the value was, 30,000, um, then you can have an immediate um, uh, calculation there to identify that, that the risk is actually more than, than the controls. But if you are starting to actually calculate all the controls that you've got there on processes, as well as on systems, um, let's say that is also 10,000, then you can actually see that all of these are starting to be um, starting to be very closer to the loss, and even if it's if it's over the loss, you will see that that it is going into a minus. So this is your impact analysis. Then your your conclusion is actually a root cause analysis. Now the root cause analysis is what what we will address in the bow tie um, that that we can address there. And your action plan is actually that that is a requirement by the the certification body to say that you need to, to provide the root cause analysis to prevent the, the same um, incident from happening again. And then secondly, your action plan must actually be documented there. And then it has to be signed off on a certain level. Um, and then it is either monitored on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, as well as you can have push not notifications if it goes below or um, above your your tolerance that you can that that we can actually set that the attachments that is actually included here is that you can have any kind of attachment whether it is it is um, it is a report whether it is a photo whether it is a sound um, a sound bite whether it is a voice note on WhatsApp every everything that you can have as an attachment can be attached there so this is the um, the ice cream mass, and then the checklist. The checklist is is actually. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it is going to take a, a bit of time. So what we what we have done there is is that actually we we have we we are working with um, with questions specifically to to let's say a vehicle incident. Whether it is what kind of control is it? Is it is it a preventative control? Is it a detective control? Um, is it what is it on the the P, uh, the P square? Is T square? Is the process? Is it people? Is it technology? Is it tools? What is the cost of that? As well as then, what is the impact on on that to do with human life, with your fixed assets, and what is the cost of the human life and fixed asset and move, move, movable assets? And every one of these can then be be assessed in a in in uh, in a specific environment, and you can see here, this is the um, this is the the vehicle um, checklist. That, uh, all, sorry, all the, all the checklists that we have done. So it gives you the date and time of capture. It gives you a level of assurance, a level of risk, the internal control effectiveness, and a risk matrix that it is plotted on. The insured value um, is also. Uh, documented the moment that you as the client are actually documenting that and now you can actually determine am I underinsured, underinsured or am I overinsured? What is the cost of my controls? Can I actually spend more money or less money or must I actually uh, revisit my controls there? And what is the percentage value between the insured value and, and the cost? So it is a fairly advanced system that you've got to your 
um, that is available to you. And all of these are then rolled up into, um, into a graphical overview of the health of the system itself. Now you can see here what is your wagon wheel. So from, from context, clause four, leadership five, you can see that we did not work on those um, actually, but you can see specifically that your wagon wheel is not mature. You need to be as close as close to, to one and two and three to actually understand that you have got assurance that your performance, your operations, your support, your, your planning is working in that specific environment. So this is, this is what, we, um, what, what we have got within our, within our system. And I, I, can, I can spend more time there. I don't want to do it now at the moment. This is about the value added reseller. Um, so what is the revenue streams that we have, that we have got there for you? So firstly, um, can I just confirm that you can see my, my slide? Karlin, can you, can you just do that? Or Elian? Yes, Nico, yes, we can see your slide. Everything's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. So value added reseller, what, what are we doing? What is, what, what is our objective here? We have got a system that we want to, to put out for consultants. I, I've been a consultant for, for the last 10 years, if not longer. And it is always a challenge for me to actually sit in front of a client and you know that, that this client hasn't got a system. They are still working on Excel spreadsheets. And if you are going to give your, your, your if you are having a strategic partnership with, with any one of um, the system providers, you are actually losing a client because your, the system um, providers are actually taking your, your client over and then they are selling on and on and on and on. And um, if there's um, a, a commission structure, that commission structure is actually virtually meaning nothing because you, you're either getting 5% or 10%, maybe 15%, um, if you're lucky, 20% um, of, the, of only the licenses. But in a system, there's actually a lot more money to be made. So we have built this system, and what, what, what we want to do is to actually roll it out globally um, through our, our network of consultants, through our network of, of, um, of registered VARs that has already got a client base that we don't have to have to have a, um, a long process of actually um, penetrating the market that we have got a system that is that is top notch there is no competition in, in it I can guarantee you that and that so um, first and foremost that you've got an internationally acclaimed software which you can market manage and improve as you need it to be so we will be there as your system builders so if you're looking at this system as your as your system and you're going to be treating it as your system you're going to make it as clever as you you want it to be you have another product you can present to all your clients so this is a new product that you can at your current clients that you can actually introduce there and that creates for you another revenue stream your clients are registered under your name and it is your client for life and I'm, I am saying this specifically, your client for life, because in other strategic partners that we had was that um, you are selling a system and then your, uh, your client is only on the user fees, it is for three years, or it is a very low percentage for, um, for two to three years or four years. So, um, and we, we are looking at, at a model that if you if you are reaching a certain a certain revenue model that um, that you can also have have this to be as 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 a system that you can actually give it as inheritance to to somebody to your child to your to your um, to anybody that is actually within the space and then multiple revenue streams are created for, for you whether it is cash flow or cash injection, whether it is training, whether it is consultation, whether it is annuity income, everything is actually built there for you as the consultant to actually make, 
make more money. That Isolytics, you can see Isolytics is, is, not, is not my company's name. My company's name is here in the corner, First Advisor Africa. Isolytics is a vanilla name that you can have everywhere. And we are, as Crest Advisory, are, I want to say, so proud of the system um, and, with, and with our um, support structures with the university um, and, and, with, and with us investing in the university for our, our um, research and development that we, we will always make sure that the system is the best that you can get. It will not get old. So the revenue streams unpacked. So what, what, I've, what I've got here is firstly, if you are selling a system, your system selling price um, is one component. And you can see here, here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven components that, that you can make, make, make money with. That is actually part and parcel of your revenue stream. So firstly, putting a system down, you are getting 30% and we, and we as the system owners are getting 30%. So all the, um, the first numbers that you will see is actually what the value added reseller is getting. And the second number um, or percentage scale is what, what we as the owners are getting. Modulus. So if you are selling the system, we've got a basic system. I'll explain it uh, just afterwards. We, we, we've got a basic system. Then we've got modules that we are actually like um, the bow tie, the ice cream mass, the surveys, because not every company uh, wants that. But if you are selling a module, then instead of 30%, then you are getting 40% on that module. Um, if you're looking at your, at your annual user license fee, that is what the AULF stands for. So the license fees of every user, you are getting 50, 50%. Equal square, uh, an equal share on everything there. Then your annual system maintenance fee. Your system maintenance fee is actually 20% of your system fee, always. Um, that is annually. So you are getting there a 30% um, um, versus a 70% for Crest. Then if you're talking about um, your, the configuration cost, your system configuration and implementation cost, this is where you are spending time with your client. You are sitting there face to face with your client where we have actually trained you to actually ask the correct questions within our, our, um, our mandate firstly, but secondly, within our scope of the system and you are going through a selection of questions. It is your face time, it is not my face time. So it is your money that, that you are, uh, your time that you are spending, so that is your money. So 70% is yours, 30% is for us to configure the system to what you, you wanted to have. Um, and that is the whole process from the opening until the user acceptance test. Training is actually what, what we are making sure that our, our license fee, license um, users are having training that they are being trained in each and every level that they are going to be. Whether they are a super user, whether they are an administrator, or if they are just an input user, or um, so, so that, that training is very important. And this is where you are procuring the intellectual property from Crest Advisor Africa um, and actually selling it for the 80% um, that, that, that is within our, our revenue structure. So 80% is going to you. And then to make sure that we are not losing contact with our clients, we've got an annual maintenance fee and CPD points, the, the continual professional development points, that is also going to you 80% and 20% because you need to go and retrain those people annually. And that is where it is so critical um, because you are keeping the contact with your client. The, the, the system is just an enabler to make sure that your financial objective on the right-hand side um, is actually... Um, um, achieved and that, that you've got a system in that space. I just want to go to um, the, the financial model quickly that you can actually see what, what is the, the, the pricing um, for this. So if you, if you look at 
if you look at this, you will see that I'm going to address it in US dollars. So the platform cost, this, this was the first cost there, and that includes all of these, these things here, is costing um, 20,000 US dollars. Um, and that is a once off. Uh, the description on, your, on the modules, the initial module that you, that you are buying for the, the isolytics light uh, will include the platform cost as well as three uh, access to three standards. And this is where, where you are actually calculating each and every one of the, the, um, the modules in, into the costing model. And then your annual user license fees, this is the license fees for the users. And you can see it is not um, out of the ballpark. It is, it is very balanced with other systems. The annual maintenance fee, um, this is the 20% of um, the product cost. And then your solution configuration and implementation, the SCI cost. This is where you are sitting face to face and you are actually configuring or, or completing a questionnaire and you are configuring that system to be aligned with what your client wants. And that is all your cost. Um, as I said, 80-20 or 70-30. And then training, training, there's training on various levels. So there's, there, there's training for um, uh, the system user um, for um, on, on each level and on each module. So, and that, that license is only applicable for one year. So um, the users must come back for the second year. And this is where we've got our CPD and our annual maintenance fees coming in there. And all the other costs, your disbursements is your cost, um, or is actually money that you can actually um, gain in, into, into your company. So with all of that, we are actually speaking about firstly, um, what kind of what kind of, of of offerings are we putting out there? So, firstly, the Isolytics Light. Isolytics Light is a basic system that is actually, as as I said to you, that is working with with um, with three um, ISO or management systems um, and ten users. You've got an annual main, an annual fee there of 20, 24,000 US dollars, and your monthly payment. Um, if you want to take that over uh, on, on a monthly basis, that is 1,999 um, US dollars uh, per month. And that is with a contract of a minimum of three years. On a modular approach, it is the same as the Isolytics, but uh, light, but then uh, with, with each module, um, they, they is the, um, the module cost that is as per uh, the costing sheet. And that gives you an annual income as well. And then enterprise, if you're working with big companies like banks and um, state-owned enterprises that they want to have the whole system. Now, that is not a problem because each of, each of them are, are actually speaking to each other and they want to have un, unlimited, um, unlimited users. And they, they have got it. So we've got an, an enterprise license as well that, that, that we are selling for on a monthly payment for um, around 30,000 US dollars. And the, the, minimum, the minimum is a three-year contract on that. So how to be a VAR, a value-added reseller? And actually, the value-added reseller is, is just an, an, an abbreviation or a name. You will be the owner of the system. So firstly, uh, we've got a VAR application form. So if you are interested, please let, let us know um, the people that has contacted you, whether it is myself, Elian, Karleen, Louis, um, we will send you the application form. Um, when you completed it, we will send you uh, the VAR agreement. Now the agreement will be sent to you within 48 hours and please complete that. That is actually um, explaining what is, what is our rules of engagement and we will schedule training sessions for you to understand the marketing, uh, the system, et cetera. So you will, you have got, we are actually giving you a whole support system behind you. And we will provide all marketing material electronically 
and will develop anything you need further to market isolatics. So if you need anything to be, to be designed specifically for, for possibly a banking sector, et cetera, um, we will design that for you. We will provide the username and password for you to log into the system and demo the system to your clients. Very important because um, if you know the system, it is, it is actually a walk in the park and, and it is actually a discussion that everybody wants to, wants to hear. So all of these, the bow tie and um, the checklist, the mobile, the ice cream mass has been um, discussed in, in, in previous webinars. I don't want to, to take too much time of today because we are um, running out of time. And then membership and endorsements, PECB is our most important one because we are global. Um, this system will also be in the next um, 10, 15 days. It will be on the PCB store that is open for all um, 1,844 resellers and 1,500 trainers globally on the PEC platform. And if that is in your area, we will, we will send that lead to you. Um, and then this is just testimonials from the Financial Intelligence Center that we will um, give to you as well from De Beers, Head of Compliance and Assurance, and then from the PCB itself. Uh, this is from the management system, um, senior commercial supervisor that was saying that, and this was done in uh, the end of January. So if there's any questions, please feel free to, to ask the questions. Um, Eliane, are there any yes, questions? Yes, Nico, there's the first question just came through. It is from Anthony Charles. He asked if, if the VAR is individual or organizational. It depends. If you are the director of the organization, then it is going to be for you and the organization. If you are working uh, independently, uh, we can agree with you for, for, for you as the consultant. That's okay. Good. Thank you very much. Did I answer that, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, the, the other thing is that if we are an organization going in as a VAR, yes. uh, you will have, uh, we will have more than one consultant uh, uh, working in our organization. So um, can we have more than one you know, being trained by uh, CAA? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. The more okay. consultants we have, um, Anthony, yep. the more consultants we have, they can actually work with the system, the better it is for you for sustainability. For, yeah. um, secondly, as well, that, that if you are working, working with a partnership, that each one has got their, their own clients, they can grow their own clients. We've got a specific form that um, each consultant is actually registering the clients that they've got on, um, on, on the form. I can, I, can, I can just share that with you as well that you can see. So we have, we have, we have got this, this form here that is actually saying that these are our athletics. They are client okay. registration form. So this is your record of your contractual agreement with us. So we, are, okay. we cannot take this away from you. Not, not from the contract, if there's no breach, this client will always be yours because it is registered on our system as well as if you've got um, another company that is, that is actually um, approaching your client that we can say, uh, we have to protect Anthony first. Anthony is, is the person that is working there. So they, there is no, no duplication, no overlap on this. And uh, the other question will be, uh, see, I, I'm from Malaysia. I'm not sure whether you know where this country is. I, <laughs> I was there. Yeah. No, okay. So somewhere nearby uh, Singapore, I you know, we yes. are sandwiched between Thailand and Singapore. So uh, if, if we become a VAR, uh, my question would be, would there be other VAR appointed as well in my country? It depends on how, how... Would there be more than one VAR in a, in a country? Itself? Yes, yes, yes. A country right. is for one, one VAR. Um, I, I, can, I can explain to you, Anthony, that, that um, we, have got a, we have got, as Crest Advisor Africa, we have, we have got a footprint um, from, 
from Japan, uh, Australia, um, Singapore, Malaysia, India, um, Europe, as well as in, in, in the Americas. We are, we are also licensed by the PCB um, to conduct work in Africa, the Middle East, Pacific, um, and Asia, and Europe. And we are busy at the moment with the Americas. So, so uh, they, yeah. sorry. So there can be more than one PAR for isolatics in Malaysia, right? Yes. All right. Yes. So there is there is no limits. No, there is no limits. Unlimited VAR. That's correct. Yes, but um, but what you also have to remember, so we will register your clients under your name. So right. if if you have registered, whether they have bought it or not, and you are you are at this stage working with them. Nobody else will be able to, to go to that client or take that client from you. Yes. Okay. You will be registered as the, as the VAR for that specific client. All right. Uh, That's correct. Two more, two more questions. That's um, fantastic. I think go for yeah. it. I love it. Um, uh, I, I, I look at the uh, benefits of having this system. Yes. And I also look at it uh, from your experience since the time you initiated ISO, uh, Isoletics. Mm -hmm. Have there been any uh, small and medium enterprises who have actually uh, implemented isolatics? Yes, yes, we, we, we have got so small and medium enterprises. What, what um, if they can, if they can afford it, and um, if it's, it depends on, on how do you define small and medium enterprises, because it, it can be either thirty people or three hundred people in. in yes. So, um, um, if there is, if they can can afford the license fees, then that is that is very easy. Smaller the enterprise is, actually, the easier uh, it is for the system to be implemented. Really, to be honest with okay. you, because there is. Are there? Sorry. Okay. Are there any other players? Are there any other players in the region of uh, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand? No. Oh, okay. Not yet. I know that. Not yet. I know that. <laughs> That's not, a good not one. Yet. We're waiting for okay. you, Anthony. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, the, 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 the reason why I'm asking this is um, I've been with PECB for quite some time. That's and good. I'm also, li I'm also a license holder for two uh, US uh, providers, not in uh, systems. Yes. So we normally cover a certain region. We normally cover a certain okay. region based yes. on the performance, right? That's correct, on performance. Uh, yeah. So um, that, that is what I'm looking at. And uh, the, the product is interesting. Uh, I do understand where you're coming from, uh, how the system has been developed. Probably I need to understand a little bit more. No and um, I, I myself have been just like you, Nico, being a consultant for almost 22 years in, uh, mm -hmm. in the ISO field. So I do understand the, the problems that organizations are facing. Yes, uh, probably it's the same problems all over the world. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. So and yeah. and I, and I think with COVID now, um, it is it's, it is going to be actually more uh, more difficult to get certified because people can get close to the client. So this is the question that I wanted to ask you. Yes. Uh, can this be a tool for remote? You know, Absolutely. remote. Yeah. <laughs> Remote auditing, you know. That's correct, my friend. Everything, yeah. in this, everything in this tool has actually been built for actually for 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 the company to audit themselves. Firstly, yeah. uh, because yeah. they are seeing that they are at at a certain maturity level, and they've got okay. all the evidence there. It is very easy to go into into an audit. I just did did an audit um, in February. The lady left now um, Inku. Um, we prepare them, or, or actually, Elian prepared them for the audit um, since last year of July, Elian, and yes. they they had. We were doing ISO eighteen seven double eight, but ISO nine thousand was um, was audited in January, and because of because of Elian's input into into the whole system, um, the, they were having they fly they flew through. The whole audit in January uh, with DQS, and they had all the proof. And this is what what we're talking about about this system that is actually giving you 
a one-stop place. So you can actually have all the evidence uploaded. You can see the evidence. You can actually download it. You can have access to everything that you need to have. And, and what we have got with machine learning, eventually with enough documentation, we will actually have um, with the machine learning and the artificial intelligence to actually read the, doc the documentation and grade it for you as well. How do you how do you handle the site aspects of it? I mean, we, we look at documents, but how do you look into the site? Uh, is there any way that when you do an audit, we have to we have to um, we have to see what what is what is the outcome of of COVID um, because oh, okay. <laughs> the site inspection you can you can actually shorten that um, tremendously because you can do yeah. everything on Zoom or on uh, on mm -hmm. or or any other face-to-face -face system that you've got. Um, and this system just, just gives you all the access to all the documentation and all the grading actually. And as well yeah. as um, what is very nice is if you do any meetings, any interviews, um, anything like that um, on a Zoom and you record it, you can load it yeah. up as evidence. That's correct. So uh, it be as evidence. So that yeah. is very nice. So you can do 90% of your audit completed. Right. Um, unfortunately, more. there will be a, a, an interface where you might have to go to site. Yeah. I, I don't think we at this stage can, can get rid of that part. But 90% um, but, but of the work will have been done and that can then be shorted. Okay. And uh, uh, of course, I think I'm probably jumping the gun going into no jump. something extra. Uh, there will be templates of proposals given by you all on how to... Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So all the marketing material, um, all the, the proposals, everything um, is documented on our site. So, so if you want to, to have that, it is part of the VAR. And this is why I was saying that if, if, if we can, can, can have um, the VAR process going, we can assist you in every, every, every way with proposals. So so the agreement between the VAR will be between the appointed VAR and the CAA, or is it with the isoletics? Or I mean, how, is, how does the agreement? Okay, the um, the company that is owning this is Crest Advisor Africa, so it is yeah. going with with CAA, but it is for right. the isoletics. Okay, for for marketing purposes, um, uh, would that be? where we could uh, actually express to clients that we are the appointed um, yes. resellers of CAA. Absolutely. And would that, allow us, would that allow us to put your logo on, on whatever that we want to do to promote? That's correct. That's because, because some organizations require approval to put their logo anywhere That's correct. else, uh, on That's the correct. website or on the materials, right? That's correct. That is in All the right. contract. It is, it is within the VAR. Uh, use of the logo and the moment that we have appointed you we we yeah. will we will also also give you a certificate just like okay. uh, the PCB we give yeah. you a certificate that is that is actually electronically and we are appointing you uh, right. to place advisor Africa to be an isolytics value added reseller. Once appointed as a VAR how long does the training process take place to do this marketing? Uh, it, it is it is maximum a week. A week. Does that require a lot of technical understanding of uh, the ISO ethics? Not actually. If if you um, in which ISO are you working, Anthony? Uh, I'm I'm more into the nine thousand, fourteen thousand, forty-five thousand, one three four eight five, thirty-seven thousand. Those areas. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So so if if you are if you are looking at at the standards, eighty percent of of all the content, whether it is it is um, your your context, your leadership, your um, mm -hmm. planning, etc., eighty percent of everything is actually the same. It is only operations that is actually changing. Right. Yeah. So, but but to understand the system, that's what I'm yes. talking about. No, yeah. the system five days. It's good enough, huh? Five yes, good enough. Good enough. Right. Okay. Good enough right. for you to to actually be in front of a client and to. Okay. The client okay. but you you have already got the eyes of experience yes yeah. so, um, that, that is that is fantastic okay 
Thank you. Cutting everything, everything for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the for the questions, Anthony. Any right. other? Okay. Okay, Nico, I just see there's a, um, a request that we do send the recording of the, um, the, the webinar. Um, Jeffrey had a little bit of connectivity problems. He could only join at the end. But I did inform him that we have another webinar on this next Wednesday um, again, same time. Um, but we will send the, the recording of this one in the meantime. 100%. And okay. Anthony... Yes. Uh, from Zimbabwe actually said, thank you, very nice, fantastic presentation. Yep, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank yep. you everybody. Much yep. appreciated. Right and and uh, let's, let's, let's do business. Let's make money. Yep, yep. That's all, right. that's what all this is about. Absolutely. Making money. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's make money for you and let's make money for, yeah. for everybody that is involved. Yeah. Right. So, okay, okay, great. We will see thank you yeah. again. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you bye. very much, everyone. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye.